Noises in the Dark, a terrifying true submission by Dennis Perita. I'm a 15-year-old Australian male. This all happened somewhere around halfway through last year, when I was still 14. It was about my bedtime when I had finished watching one of your videos, one that was about Eyeless Jack. I despised having a bedtime at 10 p.m., especially considering my friends would often boast about staying awake until 3 a.m. or later. Anyways, I kept reviewing the contents of the video in my head, though I can't really remember it very well as of right now. All I can remember is that there were symptoms for meeting Jack or something. It didn't disturb me too much, since I knew it was just a video, a creepypasta. I also knew that even though it was just a video, I was still going to get paranoid. I hated being alone in the dark, because that was when my mind would always run rampant and think of things to make me so scared I may as well be on the verge of tears. I always sort of shriveled up within myself when in the dark. My head would sink into my shoulders and I would keep my arms close to my body as possible fearing that something would grab one of them and drag me off somewhere. This only happened if I was alone, however. And alone I was. So, after putting off going to bed for about 30 minutes, I finally got worried that I would get caught staying up later than I should and prepared myself for sleep. I got in my pajamas, readied my bed, and made sure that my alarm was set so I could get up for school. I laid in my bed, and after a long while of pointless daydreaming, I finally drifted off into a blissful sleep. However, after a few hours, I woke up again. I did that often. I'd often wake up randomly at night because of a dry throat and a desperate need for water. I always hated it, because that meant I had to walk through the hallway from my room, enter the living room, and from there make my way towards the kitchen. All in the dark aside from when I turned on the lights. For a few minutes, I contemplated my options. I could either try to go back to sleep, or I could try to man up and get a drink of water. Even though I really didn't like the idea of walking in the dark, I knew that not drinking water wasn't an option. So I got up, turned on the lights in my room, and slowly pushed the door open. I opened my door completely to let as much light from my room escape and enter the hallway so I could see where I was going a little better. Then, at the pace comparable to a grandma, I walked across the hallway in my turtle-like state all the way to the end, which was where the sliding door leading towards the living room was, and was also the location of the light switch. I didn't bother turning it on because I had already made it through the hall and would probably just wake up my older brother. I tried my best to stay quiet, which was not my forte, as I proceeded to open the sliding door and turn on the light for the living room. The light was able to convince me to move faster, and I made it to the kitchen in no time. After I had gotten a cup of water and finally quenched my desert-like throat, I quickly left the cup in the sink and headed back to my room, turning off all the lights along the way. I closed the door to my room and virtually crashed onto the bed, happy I was out of there and actually proud of myself for going through the whole ordeal relatively quickly. My light was off, so I was able to go to sleep on a good note. Then, it all started. I heard a creaking sound. It was a strange sort of creaking sound, almost like a mix of a rusty door hinge and the grudge. It was very faint, and it made me feel curious and just a bit nervous. I tried to shrug it off and fall asleep, but it didn't stop. The noise would creak for a few seconds and then stop for an interval of about 5 to 20 seconds, and then repeat. Again, I wasn't a brave person alone, so I didn't leave the protection of my bed to inspect. I just lied there not moving for about 30 minutes, listening to the noise and praying it would soon stop. It didn't. A few seconds later, I decided to get up out of bed and turn on the lights. I then proceeded to sit patiently on my bed, waiting for the noise to pop up so I could track its location and find out what was causing it. 
Strangely, and admittedly half-expectedly, nothing was heard. Not a sound. I waited a little longer before giving up and turning off the lights and returning to my safe haven, my bed. I thought it had stopped for good and was just about to fall asleep, when I heard it again. The creaking. Suddenly, I became slightly angry, which was very unlike me. The creaks continued, each time making me more annoyed. A few seconds later, I got up and turned on the lights and waited for the creaks to go on again. But yet again, there was nothing. Again, I waited a little longer just to be sure. But once again, I ended up turning off my lights, returning to my bed, none the wiser. The noises continued, and I continued to get slightly irritated, though at some point I reached my peak and just didn't get any angrier. I wasn't mad, but I definitely wasn't in a good mood. Then something completely shattered my newfound strong emotion. I had just heard a soft tap on my window. My eyes shot wide and I felt fear twist itself around my heart, but I didn't dare move. The window in my room stretched from wall to wall, floor to ceiling. It was opposite to my bed, meaning if I slept on my back, I could see it in my peripheral vision. Of course, I had the curtains drawn together, so I couldn't see out the window. I began to panic and sweat. The soft creaks, mixed with the occasional gentle tap, was becoming too much for me. I began feeling miserable, dreadful. I wanted to stop it, and I wanted to do something, but I was too scared to move an inch. All I could do was wait. This continued for about five minutes, although it felt like years to me at the time. It seemed as if the strange torment would never end. I tried to convince myself it was all in my head, that it was just because of that video I watched, but I knew that I didn't believe that. What was happening wasn't my imagination. It was real. After a while, I slowly became used to the tapping and creaking. It still scared me, but now that I had identified where the sound was coming from, to some extent, it didn't seem to bother me as much. Though I certainly was nowhere near not terrified. And then, a noise so loud and sudden that it almost made me jump out of my skin occurred. It was the exact noise you would hear if you slammed both your hands against a double-glazed window. And I do mean slammed. The dull, echoing thud was unmistakable. I felt myself begin to crack. Was I being haunted? Was I going insane? Who knew? I realized something was wrong with me when I got out of my bed a measly 15 seconds after the noise was heard. I was attracted by the idea that it was Eyeless Jack, possibly visiting me. The lack of sleep and constant exposure to paranormal activity was messing with my brain, and I didn't even realize it. I walked over to the curtain, readied my hand, and then slowly pulled the curtain away from the side. I fully expected to see Eyeless Jack standing there, just beyond the glass, but nothing was there. I didn't know whether I found that comforting or terrifying. Then, as I walked back to my bed, shaking with fear, I told myself that if anything else happened, I would run to my parents' room and tell them what was going on. I got in bed and got as comfortable, if it even was a thing by that point, as possible. I couldn't close my eyes for fear something would begin happening, that something would open my door and stare at me. I knew if I closed my eyes, I'd be too afraid to open them again. But then, I realized that there was a lack of sound. It seemed pretty quiet. I listened carefully, just in case I didn't hear it, but I heard nothing. But I was far beyond relaxing. I was stiff, paranoid, and couldn't fall asleep. I eventually shut my eyes and tried to force myself, but it didn't work. Even so, I kept my eyes shut. Then, probably the worst thing I have ever experienced in my entire life happened. I heard two very loud sounds. The sound of something heavy landing on the carpet near my bed, and then the louder sound of something stumbling and crashing into the wall of my room. I snapped. I ripped off my bedsheets, turned on the lights, and quickly scanned my room. 
After a second of finding and seeing nothing, I burst out of the door and sprinted through the hallway into the living room and towards my parents' room. I didn't bother turning on any lights or trying to be quiet in the slightest. When I came in, they were both asleep, and I hastily woke them and told them everything. After I had calmed down, I explained everything to them a second time, this time actually sounding like I was speaking English. They took my words into careful consideration and headed to my room. I told them that it wouldn't make sense for a 14-year-old to just randomly hear a single noise and get scared. I told them it was much worse than a simple rush of wind or the bark of a dog. For the most part, they did believe me. When they entered my room to see it for themselves, however, nothing happened. It was to be expected. They reassured me and ushered me to try and sleep once more, this time with my blue lava lamp on and my door open, and if anything happened, I needed to call them immediately. I agreed, though not particularly keen on having my door open, and tried to fall asleep. Eventually, I was actually able to fall into a dreamless sleep. The rest of the day was normal. The morning was normal, school was normal, and the afternoon was normal. It was just a regular day. But to this day, I still do not know what happened or why. All I know is that the fear I felt, the things I heard and experienced, it was real. It was all real.